Kia ora guys, George here, Shred Every Day, and today I've got a great animation video for you that's going to talk about how muscles really work, and from that we're going to be able to adjust our workouts to take maximum advantage of this process to get maximum muscle growth. Okay, because everyone or most people know that you have the shortening of the muscle and the lengthening of the muscle. The shortening of the muscle is called the contraction or the concentric part of the motion. And then the lengthening of the muscle is the eccentric part of the motion. Most people know that, but what we're going to talk about now is how it really works at a molecular level. I've got a really cool animation to show you for it. And then once we've gone through that, we're going to talk about how you can take advantage of this process to get maximum benefit in the gym. And a lot of people don't do this. Everyone's doing it wrong. A few people are doing it right. And let's see if you are too. So let's get into this animation and really go into how muscles work in the body. Okay, so here's my cool narration on this awesome animation of how we move muscle. So if we zoom into muscle and really take an in-depth look, you'll find that the skeletal muscle is made up of muscle fiber bundles. And these are basically long cylindrical cells that can contract or relax when they get signals from the nervous system through the neurons to the neuromuscular junction. Now each of these fibers is composed of many, many little myofibrils. And these are split up into individual units called sarcomeres. And sarcomere is what we're gonna look at here. So when you look at an individual sarcomere, they're composed of thick and thin filaments. And this is what makes our muscle look striated. So these filaments slide past each other to shorten the sarcomere unit and shorten the entire muscle fiber. Now the thick one is called myosin, and that's connected to the center of the sarcomere on the M line. The thin one, the thin strand, is called actin, and that's connected to the edge of the sarcomere on the Z line. And these basically slide past each other to shorten the entire sarcomere unit and shorten the muscle, allowing a contraction. But what's really going on here is not really sliding. We've actually got the thick uh, filament here, which is called the myosin and the actin. And the myosin is actually connecting to the actin at these cross bridges and then pulling the actin towards the myosin, allowing the edge of the sarcomere to be pulled towards the center, making the sarcomere shorter. And this simply repeats connection, pull, and release uh, to shorten the entire sarcomere muscle. So what this requires is what's called ATP, which is where we get our energy. And this ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP, an organic phosphate. This then triggers the myosin to connect onto the actin at these binding sites, and then what we get is called the power stroke, which is where the myosin pulls the actin, which shortens the entire sarcomere unit, shortening muscle fibers overall. Once that step has been completed, the ADP and phosphate are released. And from that point, it allows new ATP to connect on, which promotes either the cycle to be repeated, or it just simply disconnects the myosin, allowing the muscle to relax, depending on the signals that it's being received. So overall, we've got an amazing process going on here at the molecular level at a simple muscle movement. So in summary, we've got the thick myosin filaments pulling the actin filaments, and this is within the sarcomere unit, pulling the edges of the sarcomere towards the middle, which shortens the sarcomere unit and contracts it into a basically a smaller size. This Contraction of the sarcomere unit will shorten the muscle fibers within the entire muscle belly, making your muscle contract. Then when your ATP runs down, you get tired and fatigued, and your set is done, my friend. Cool animation, eh? It's amazing what goes on at the molecular level when we're simply moving muscle. So how can we take advantage of this? How can we take what we understand now about how muscles work to make sure we get most rapid muscle growth in and out of the gym? when we go for a workout. So muscles grow because they're exposed to stress and strain. When we go and we lift something super, super heavy that we're not used to lifting before, at the molecular level, there's all these micro tears of those individual muscle fibers. And as we lift the weight, we get lots and lots of little tears where they actually rip apart. Think of it like pulling apart a piece of meat or a piece of dough or something like that. You get all these little rips and and we get these little tears. Then when we go outside the gym and we come to recovery, 
the body wants to repair itself and it will reattach these muscle fibers, which will lengthen the muscle, plus a few extra muscle fibers, which will make the muscle grow and make it stronger than before so it doesn't experience the same problem again. So we want to make as many of these micro tears as possible in the gym so that when we go outside the gym, we get more recovery more muscle fibers reconnecting and building and more muscle growth. So how can we create more muscle tears? Basically, that's during the eccentric part of the motion. The eccentric part of the rep where the muscle is lengthening is where we're going to get most muscle tearing, which is going to trigger muscle growth. So a lot of people, when they do any kind of exercise, lifting a weight and lowering a weight, lifting a weight and lowering a weight, lifting a weight and lowering a weight, during the eccentric part of the motion, they just drop it and they're so quick about it and they don't use the advantage of that part of the rep. So instead of pushing up the weight and then dropping it immediately, allow yourself to experience more time under tension. More time under tension, just like I talked about in that rep tempo video, will mean you're allowing more and more and more micro tears during a longer period. So all the time you're lowering that weight, lowering that weight, you're going to get more of these tear, 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 and all these micro tears will be damaging the muscle, signaling more muscle growth outside the gym. So when you do your reps next time, concentrate on the eccentric part of the motion, okay? Lowering the weight nice and slowly to really trigger muscle growth through those micro tears. And your muscle is actually 40% more strong during that part of the motion. It's actually quite surprising. There's other things you can do as well. You can do negatives at the end of a set, which is basically using a spotter to help you get to the top of the motion and then lowering it as slow as you can. And it really, really hurts and you won't be able to do as many reps, but you're gonna get more muscle growth, more muscle stimulation and activation for protein synthesis into muscle. So really do those negatives as slow as you can, even like 10 seconds and then have your spotter or your mate lift it back up with you and then do it again for another one. And that will really, really get you going. Uh, and those negatives are really good to incorporate into your workout. So give them a go. Understanding how muscle functions now allows you to understand how tearing of the muscle, all those little micro tears are gonna trigger muscle growth. And the more tears we can get, the more we're going to trigger muscle growth. Hope you liked this video. It was a cool animation. Give it a like, share it on YouTube, and like us on Facebook. Uh, give us some questions, or give me questions, it's only me. Give me some questions, and uh, keep them coming, and I'll catch you tomorrow for another video, guys. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.